everybody. Fourth time's the charm. <laughs> oh, some days you just can't turn your brain on right. I'm so glad you're here with me. My name is Laura and you found Lology Stitches. If you're new, welcome, welcome. And if you're an oldie but a goodie, welcome back. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I was, I have vacillated a few times on when to do my video. This is when I'd scheduled to do it a couple weeks ago and and uh, and so I've been kind of gearing up mentally for it all week, thinking about what I wanted to talk about and you know, that whole game. And, and then this morning rolled around and yesterday was totally crazy. We were gone all day running errands and you know, we had to get you know, new driver's licenses updated and everything like that, grown up things, right? <laughs> um, and then, and so I, my brain just wasn't there. And when I woke up this morning, I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'll do it. I mean, the jingle balls today, everybody's going to be busy with that. And uh, anyways, I just decided this is when I'd scheduled it. And so this is when it's happening. <laughs> and so here I am woo, <laughs> with my sparkly sweatshirt. And, and I'm excited. I've got a lot to share. So uh, this is, I've decided... Um, let me settle my brain for a second. I've decided, normally I do my quilting bees and my floss tubes in separate videos. And last video I did just a, a small combo because it had been a while since I'd, you know, shared. <laughs> and, and with the holidays and everything, that just, I think that is gonna work for the rest of the year. So through December, I will, just throw a little 15 minutes or so of quilting bee onto the end and then in the new year we'll go back to separate videos so for those of you who are kind of like curious but not maybe not committed to watching a quilting video it's a good teaser i suppose <laughs> and um for those who have enjoyed them being separate videos fear not it will return it's just with the busyness of life, it's easier for me to be able to do it in one filming session. So that being said, there will be what just happened. Whoa. It didn't do it again. That was weird. Am I seeing things? <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and look at this and edit that out if that happened. Um, I feel like it just made fireworks all over the screen because I went like thumbs up or something like that. I'm not sure what triggered that or why it would do that without me clicking on something. Okay, my computer's being weird. I'm not going to start over again though because I literally did my intro about four or five times before I was like, okay, we're just, we're just going with it. <laughs> it, is, it will be what it will be. Um, so if there were fire net fireworks, that was even more exciting than I planned. <laughs> if there weren't, maybe I'm just crazy. It's fine. Um, that being said, where's my brain? So all my video. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, I am going to do a floss tube extra, if you will. Um, I, I've never done one of those. I've always just, they've just been floss tubes. Um, but I see the value in it for this. I want to kind of chat about my plans. I'm going to be participating in 12 by 12, but I've also been watching some floss tube and I've been inspired by, um, a couple people who I will mention at the end. I just want to make a note because I did not do really comprehensive notes, just more like bullet points. <laughs> so if I think of something, I need to jot it down. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I want to do a couple shout outs at the end and, and some thank yous with my haul, but I've been inspired by a couple of different floss tubers and I kind of want to tweak my 12 by 12 plans, uh, based on, you know, their ideas. And then I have, you know, I've just got plans. I've got ideas. So, and, um, I have my little Hobonichi planner, um, mostly set up for 
next year this is what I'm going to use to track my crafts in so I would I've had some interest in seeing how that would work so I'm gonna it'll be a, a planning looking forward to 2024 kind of video and that will happen this month as well so it's another reason to kind of condense everything else I'm doing into fewer videos because I'm adding an extra thing so that will be fun. That will be great. And let's talk about cross stitch. I have two FFOs and two finishes. And I feel like a crazy person every time I'm like, who am I? Because it's true. I could go a year without, well, not a year without finishes, but a year without fully finishing anything in the past or, um, I can go months without a finish. So, and I feel like the last three months I've had fairly consistent finishes, <laughs> which is awesome. It's excellent. What a way to end the year. But, um, you know, don't get used to it, I guess, <laughs> because it's not the norm. Uh, anyway, so it's been two weeks. I've stitched. I've lost my voice. <laughs> Excuse me. I have stitched eight of the 14 days. It's been busy, we've had a holiday, and um, just l general life busyness. Um, so, but I did get two finishes in. So the first one uh, is Turkey Day by Cottage Garden Samplings. He's very dapper, and he's very done. Let me get my board here. which I did not expect. Okay, I did not expect to finish him this year, you guys. I thought, okay, I'll pull him out, I'll get to this point, and I'll finish him next year. Now, he's gonna be in a frame by, by next year. Here he is. A little overexposed because the sun, it was such a dark gray morning, like dark gray and cold, with a little rain every once in a while, and now it's like, ah, oh, I'm blind. <laughs> it's a good thing, the sunshine is wonderful. We have a windstorm warning tonight. Anyways, I diverge. This is my turkey. Like it's, I think what got us on that is he's a bit overexposed. So, but he's gorgeous and I'm so, so thrilled with how he turned out. I did post a picture on my Instagram. So if you want a less uh, bright <laughs> version of him so you can get the richness of the colors uh, that might be your best shot. I did do a couple of color shifts. Um, uh, the blue, the call for blue is a solid in the pattern. I used Gentle Arts Distressed Linen for that. I just want a little bit of movement. And then I shifted the, let's see, where all is it? It's mostly the stems, it looks like. Yeah, the stems and the leaves is called <laughs> Grape Arbor, also a Gentle Arts. And I don't know, I just tweaked the colors. I made them a little bit more to my liking. <laughs> and I think they didn't have one of the purpley pinks when I was shopping, and that is Briar Rose. Anyways, if you're interested in what I actually use, like a, a full list, I, I have it written down, so I can, I'm happy to share that with you. Um, but happy, happy, I'm so pleased with him, and huzzah. <laughs> Mr. Turkey. I finished him on Thanksgiving. We got all of our I got all of our meal prepped. Oh my gosh, it's so bright. Excuse me, one second. Oh, my goodness. Close it a little bit more. Um, anyways, I got all of the meal prepped and we ate and then we got cleaned up and I was ready to do some stitching and so I pulled him out because I was fully prepared to ditch all things autumn <laughs> after Thanksgiving day and move into Christmas. And so, he was my stitch of choice and I just didn't put him down. I finished him that day. So that was pretty, pretty excited. Uh, the next one I did is Darling and Whimsy Designs Quirky Quaker Stocking. 
And this was a really quick stitch. I just pulled floss from stash. It calls for Brin and Needle flosses, which I have none of. Um, so I just, I just pulled from stash, put it on a scrap of, what is this, Portobello? Portobello Road. Yes, Portobello 30 count linen. And there it is. Now you may be saying, Laura, you missed a piece. I didn't care. I didn't care. Once I got, mm -hmm. <laughs> once I got stitching on this, I decided that I didn't want to do these white outer Quakery bits. And I'm just really happy with how it looked. I feel like this is simple and I feel like I see the trees more with it. So I am going to finish it as a stocking in the hexagon shape, which will make it so that those spaces no longer feel quite as dramatic. But I love it. I think it's so sweet. And my three looks a little bit like an E, but whatever. <laughs> it's great. Um, so that's my ornament this year. It's the only one I'm gonna do. Last year I did a whole bunch and I kind of got burnt out on them. So it was a bit of a surprise to pick this up. It was totally impulsive, but I love it. It's sweet. I used, uh, I think it was all classic color works colors. And again, if you're interested in what colors I actually used, I'm happy to share those. Um, yeah, sweet. I love it. Went really fast. Okay. And then my FFOs you're going to see closer towards the end because they are, well, no, I'll show them now. I'll show them now. It's fine. Um, I made a bunch of project bags. So that was kind of going to be more in the quilting segment, but these have cross stitches and strings um, <laughs> uh, in them. So I just did, you know, batting filled soft finish. But I used last year, last January and February, I hosted a stitch along. Um, and these were Little House Needleworks, Frosty something. <laughs> I should have gotten that information before I started the video, but I didn't even think about that, honestly. Frosty Friends, I think is what it's called. And I combined two of the pictures, I kind of butted them up together and eliminated the center border so that it would make one image. And I, I wasn't sure I was gonna finish it. I thought originally I would do a, a wall hanging, but I needed project bags and I don't know, it just kind of worked. So, and I've seen a couple other people put cross stitch panels in their project bags and I think it's so darling. So super simple, super quick. Uh, but now I get to see it all the time while I stitch. I put, sorry for the zipper sound real quick. I put my Vanity Fair or Vanity, Vanity Fair, <laughs> Vanity Sampler uh, kit in here, which will be one of my 12 by 12 starts probably so which you'll see when I do when I do my um, planning video I will also do a little basically parade of my 12 by 12 starts so you'll get to see those more later and then the second one I finished was also a stitch last year this was a stitch along hosted by stitchy Sally and it was a free download and oh my goodness I love, love, love it. It's so happy. And I, I picked this uh, fabric for it. I didn't have enough, a wide enough piece to do my back, so I pieced that. But I, at first I was like, that's kind of crazy. It's kind of wild and busy with um, my pretty stitching, but it works. I kind of like it. So don't hate on my busy fabric choice. <laughs> Not that you would, but um, anyways, it was super fun to do. Again, just a real quick batting filled bag and I have this cute fabric inside of it. And this one is holding my Prairie Schooler Christmas Tree Farm, which I haven't started yet, but will start in the next week, I think. So 
yeah, fully filled, fully finished, functional, in use bags. It feels really good. Better than it sitting in the closet in my bucket of I finished it, but haven't done anything with it yet. So. <laughs> there were a lot of um, hyphens in that statement. <laughs> okay, and then I have a handful more project bags, but I'll show those at the end in my quilting um, because I, I only did so much quilting in two weeks, so <laughs> they get to be in that segment. So if you want to see the rest of the project bags, I'm holding them hostage. Um, all right, so next I had two. I didn't wind up starting that one. I have my little list here and I didn't actually stitch yesterday so that one didn't get started. Um, two new starts because I finished the Quaker stocking ornament. Um, the first one is Shannon Christine Designs Sugar Plum Village, which is so delightful. It is so, so pretty. I love this. I am stitching it on a, I put it in here, 36 count meditation by Picture This Plus. Where's my board? I tucked it back in here. <laughs> and hopefully this will show with the overexposed light. I'm not so sure. It was like perfect lighting an hour ago. <laughs> um, yeah, it's okay. It's just the loveliest, soft, like sky blue and lavender marble. And you can just get little deeper moments that it go a little bit more lilac. And it's really, really lovely fabric. It's not going to show well. Um, but that's my little start on it. I stitched it thrice as I tried to figure out... Uh, normally on something like this, I would do a center start just because then I know the whole square is going to be centered, but I didn't really want to work on the gazebo yet. So I was going to do a corner start. I thought that little top line of houses would be the most fun to get into. Um, so the first time I started, it was too far and then it was, you know, just not in the right spot. And I didn't do more than 20 or 30 stitches each time and pulled it out and... And finally I was like, okay, trust the math <laughs> and we'll see. This is not quite half, so we're not quite to the center of the fabric. It should, in theory, be in the right spot. We'll find out. Um, anyways, I know it's a super thrilling line of bare branches, <laughs> but I, I live to please here, so... Oh, this is uh, in a bag I just finished. It's because it's with a project. It gets, uh, you get to see it first. It has a cute little polka dot in the center. And I love this fabric. I've had this in my stash. I have like a yard of it. And I've been hoarding it because it's so cool. Um, but I just didn't know what to do with it. And finally I was like, to heck with it. I'm chopping into it. I'm making a project bag. And it just felt appropriate for the sugar plum whoa sugar plum not prom <laughs> village i just dropped something Oof, duh. okay so that i did one day on and then i gave a couple of days of stitching to heartstring samplery christmas bells sampler which is one of my favorite projects that I have for Christmas right now. It is so gorgeous and so elegant and I need to submit my one, two, three stitch cart so that I have the darker red. They were out of it last year when I started this and here is where I am. I forgot to show you before. Okay, well, fine. I'm going to show you before. So much you have no idea what I've done. Um, wakey, wakey. Here we go. So this is where I was before. I had that top center line and a few details, and I'd gotten, a, I'd thrown a couple flowers in there just to see what it would look like last year. So I've now thrown in a couple of bells and. That's the full width of the design. I'm stitching this on a 28 count uh, Picture This Plus sand. It is 
such a lovely, warm, uh, sandy tan in person. Again, it's a little washed out, but you can see the variegation in the silks. I am stitching it with the Call for Silks, which is the first time I've done that. And they are divine to work with. I mean, I've worked with silks before in some of my mirabilias, but um, I've never, the only thing that's not silk in this design is the, I think it's called Etoile uh, DMC, the sparkly little devil floss uh, that looks so pretty <laughs> when it's stitched. <laughs> um, I've got strings. <sighs> Anyways. I am loving it. You'll notice my needle is sitting right here. That is because technically I missed a stitch there. Uh, and I have been waiting, I've been debating for the last almost week on whether or not to pull all of this out and add that stitch so that it is one stitch over. I'm not sure that I will, honestly. The silk, I don't think it would survive the rip out. It just is so delicate and frays so easily. I'm always trimming the ends off of my silk as I stitch because it gets fuzzy. Um, and I just, I'm, I'm already questioning whether or not I'll need to buy a second skein. I, I may be fine. Uh, the, the Gloriana's do, I think it's Gloriana. I'm pretty sure do come with, yes, Gloriana Silks. They do come with, they're a 12 strand skein instead of a six strand. So they cost more than like a traditional overdyed, but they have twice as much floss on them. So really it balances out really nicely. Um, I'm wondering if I'll have enough green. I'm almost halfway through the green. So I might make it, I'll let you know. I am doing it on a bigger, count than called for so it's my own bad but <laughs> but like I said I I don't have the red which will fill in the rest of this and then the top other than like I think two more bells is done and I'm ready to work down the sides and start adding words in so I love this project I think it's absolutely gorgeous it will be one of the more elegant pieces I've ever finished when that day comes <laughs> um but yeah, I'm not sure. I think I might just fudge this. I don't think because the border, if you look at the image, it comes down and it swirls and then there's definitely, they're not connected, right? And then you start another little swirl of a vine. And so I think I can get away with just fudging it because it's just one stitch. It's incorrectly, it's just because I missed that one stitch in the, um, I missed that one stitch in this stretch, it's just one spot over. So it's one spot shy and one spot higher than it should be. Um, but because they don't connect, I think I can, I think I can get away and it won't be noticeable. And then I don't lose that floss. Cause like I said, everything from that point down is correctly stitched. So. What is it? I was watching, I don't remember who it was, but somebody said always forward, never backward. <laughs> and there are times when I will pull it out, but I don't know. This one, like I said, I've been debating it for a week, so we'll see what happens. I may have to buy more floss though if I decide to pull it out. Um, la 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 la. Okay. The next one I worked on, I just pulled this out, so I was gift my sweet friend Lisa from Lost in Stitches. Uh, we started a, a stitch along earlier this year together and we've both fallen off the bandwagon due to seasonal stitching and we'll pick that up again in the new year. It was just a casual sal, but um, but it's fun to stitch together. So we're both kind of, we were chatting about it the other day and we're gonna wait uh, to pick that one up again in the new year. All of which is to say, we were chatting and she has opened her uh, an, Etsy, an Etsy shop. She has decided to start designing uh, cross stitch designs and they are delightful. They are so sweet. I saw her video and instantly went and bought 
She has four charts out so far. And where is, I know I printed everything off. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're at, interesting. It's missing in action. Well, I went and printed off one of her, one of the first two she released. This is Winter Snow Minis. I can't read backwards. <laughs> um, and they're so sweet. Go to her video. She has uh, the models stitched up so you can see them. And their models are always better than pictures, right? As good as we try to take pictures, they never quite do it justice. And then she um, was so generous and lovely and gave me some stitchy kindness and she released on Monday the next two designs, Merry and Bright, and they are so sweet and I would have bought them but she was a love and gave them to me as a stitchy kindness and so I went and kitted some up and I just got a very small start. <laughs> Um, anyways, it's beautiful. I love it. It's a barely there start, but they're so cute. So go check out Lost in Stitches Designs. It's on Etsy. There's my little, my little plug for her because they're cute. They're super fun. I love, love, love this little bird in the tree with the 2024. I think that's so cute. And this bottom banner is so pretty all stitched up when she showed that I was like ooh those colors so good anyway so I did a little start on that I will keep going um I did swap out my red this is a Cosmo I think it's five I don't have it sitting right here but I think it's five zero zero five anyways I just wanted something a little bit brighter since I'm putting on this um I can't really see it's not on a solid white though it has kind of a a pastel marbly rainbow on it and so I wanted it just a little touch brighter like my sweatshirt <laughs> all right last thing I worked on is uh, something I decided to finally start because we're going up into the jingle ball today this afternoon it starts in half an hour and uh, it's called peppermint candy by Lindy stitches it is the cutest it is so much fun to stitch I I'm having so much fun it's quick it's easy and it is jolly it's just jolly stitching it's happy the colors are so happy it's fun to stitch on this I don't know if you can see it's a soft like blush pink um, which I don't have the fabric information here I know I got it on Stitch Modern uh, a number of years ago, um, and I stitched my one of my Easter pieces on it. But it's perfect for a pink Christmas stitch, and this is gonna go in my sewing room when I'm done with it, and I just adore it. It's so, so fun. I have switched out some colors. It called for uh, Forbidden Fiber Co. colors for about half of them, and I don't have any of those either. <laughs> so I just did a switch out from stash and there she be. Oh, so cute. So much fun. So, so, so much fun. I may work on this during the jingle ball. That would be appropriate, right? If I go into any chat rooms and hopefully find some fun people to hang out with. Okay. So that's what I stitched on. Uh, my plans are Christmas stitching, and yeah, I have a couple more that I would like to, that I've planned to start. I showed those in my last video briefly. You'll get more details as I actually put some stitches in on them. Hopefully I'll get more stitching time this week. Even a couple of the times, like I said, I stitched eight days, but like several of the days I was just tired and it was maybe half an hour, <laughs> half an hour. Um, so some days didn't get a lot of stitching, other days got more, but, um, yeah, so I've got, it's just going to be Christmas stitching until, until around Christmas. So for the next couple, next three weeks, really, it is the first of December. So, which is wild, wild. I have my, 
uh, book of days all set up with um, my planned stitches on the side and today I'm gonna stitch oh yeah today I'm gonna stitch I'm not gonna stitch on peppermint candy I'm gonna stitch on Santa's list because today is the start of my start of Santa Sal um, stitch of Santa Sal which is in which bag this bag another new bag see they're just gonna be sprinkled out I was trying to hold them hostage but they're coming out they're breaking free um, this fabric is to die for it is the cutest most whimsical little gnome winter fabric I've ever seen <laughs> and when I saw it I had to have it it's just it makes my heart happy <laughs> and that is what my Santa of choice is sitting in it's in I think it's this one no it's this one no <laughs> Is this one? Yes. <laughs> so I'm starting this glorious Santa that will take me 10,000 years to do because it's pretty much full coverage other than the border. Um, but he's gorgeous. He'll be so worth it. Santa's list. It's in this 101 Best Love Designs book. Go ahead. And other people have showed this on the Foss tube. It's got some really, really beautiful designs that used to be in magazines. And I've got my little kit ready to go for it. So that'll be fun to get some stitches into, get a start on. As I said, there is no plan to have this finished in the next even two or three years because it's huge. Unless I fall in love with it. Make not promises. <sighs> okay. So I will be doing that. and. It's a casual sell. There's no schedule to it. It's just my friend and I were digging through all of our, um, you know, Christmassy patterns through late October and November. And we're like, oh, I've got so many Santas that I'd love to stitch. And we're like, we should just do a sell. And I was like, okay, but I'm going to tell everybody else about it too. <laughs> and so it's the... Uh, um, I've heard it a couple different ways, actually. There have been some people that have been lovely and shouted it out. And so, um, originally we were going to say, call it the Stitch a Santa Sal. Um, or Start a Santa Sal. I don't remember what we were originally going to say. Maybe it was originally Start a Santa Sal. Because we are going to start today, right? We weren't going to actually finish it. <laughs> but I've heard it more commonly said, Stitch a Santa Sal. So that's what it's going to be. Hashtag Stitch a Santa Sal. And I'll put that below just so you can see the the visual <laughs> of it. And I hope you'll join because it's going to be super fun. And I may start more than one. Who knows? It could happen. I've got lots of really cute Santas. So that'll be fun. I hope you'll join us. And I look forward to seeing what you choose if you do. Um, the Santa does not have to be full coverage giant a uh, decade long project, uh, it, all it has to have is one tiny little Santa in it and it counts. <laughs> it could be an ornament, it could be a little pillow, it could just have like, um, actually even the, where is it? This one, my prairie schooler, this would count. It has a little Santa running across the road. He's a Santa, he's in it. It works. <laughs> that could count. Um, anyways, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Just casual. Uh, the only haul I have is this Teresa Wensler Petite's Peacock and Unicorn. I found it on, I think it was a seller on Etsy. And I, I just love it. And uh, the next one I want to get of hers is... The Four Season Fairies. I think they're beautiful too. Mm. And then someday in my collection, I'll have to track down and find a dragon. There's so many Teresa Wenslers. I, I've never stitched Teresa Wensler before, but I've had a couple in my collection for a while, and I am starting um, one at the 12 by 12. 
And so I'm just going to slowly build up a little collection of my favorites. I don't think I will ever strive to have all of them, but because they're intense projects, um, they're amazing. And so I definitely have a little, a little list of Teresa Wensler's I would like to do. And I think the first one I'll do on this one is the peacock. So lovely. And wouldn't it be pretty, like I don't want a dramatic color because I want everything to show, but maybe just the softest, softest blue in the background. Maybe not. Maybe we'll just stay classic. I don't know. We'll decide whenever I decide to start it. But I think they're beautiful and I got it, got it for a steal. So that was satisfying too. <laughs> um, for now, it'll just go into my collection with all my other favorite pretties. Okay, that's all my cross stitch. Uh, today starts the jingle ball. So this weekend I'll be jingle balling and a... I'm sure I already have my eyes on they have, a couple of the designers have dropped some teasers of designs they have so I already have my eyes on a few of those and um, yeah it'll be a, it'll be super fun I'll probably mostly attend tomorrow um, just because that's why I've got the most time so but I'm looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it for a while and yeah, it'll be really good. That's, that's my really disjointed <laughs> plans here. Christmas stitching. If I, well, I will probably choose to start one of my jingle ball charts because I'm, I know that I'll buy at least a few charts during the jingle ball. And so stay tuned for that because even I don't know what those will be. <laughs> uh, they'll have to be coming from Stash at this point. So I did on Black Friday buy a couple of kits that are in transit. Uh, they were like 50% off and that's just too good a deal to pass up. So I'm excited to get those in my hot little hands and I'll share them when they come. And now I will very briefly show you a little bit of quilting. It really will be brief. Like I said, it's... <laughs> It's been kind of a busy couple of weeks, so I don't, I don't have a ton. I don't have a ton, but I have done a little bit. So let's show you the, uh, <laughs> my brain, uh, the project bags first. I did not have any vinyl on hand, clear vinyl, so uh, or soft and stable, which is my favorite um, filler for my vinyl front project bags. I'll just show you this one. Like it gives nice body, and they don't fall over. And I love I love a vinyl front bag, but I've kind of been experimenting the last couple times. I've played made bags with. Um, just fabric bags and playing with different sizes and anyways so that's what I did this time because that's what I had supplies for just from stash so this is my first one they're all just these little zipper top kind of satchels but they're from some of my favorite fabrics this one look at these sweet little chickadees or whatever they are they're so sweet I love this and it has a wintry project in it I won't show you any of these projects because you'll see them in my parade. Did this one, you can see this one is slotted to start in June next year. Um, but again, fabric I absolutely adore. And I was originally gonna make napkins out of this and then decided it was too, be too beautiful to rub faces of food all over. <laughs> so I made a project bag instead and I have more, so who knows what that will be. Uh, my Bella Filipina Alice in Wonderland needed an Alice bag, so Alice it is. And inside is another Alice. It's the little rabbit. <laughs> He's so cute. <laughs> so, so cute. Um, that's super fun. This one I tried playing with. I like having the two fabric look. That's what you get with the... Uh, vinyl fronts you get that kind of accent piece and so I was like okay well what if I did that on 
a fabric bag and it's cute I like that I actually like that almost better than the full solid ones There's, it's just a little bit more interesting and then my last one oh my gosh this fabric is a hoot it's Sasquatches and Yetis falling in love and frolicking in the forest <laughs> It's just too cute. And the little jackalopes. Oh my gosh. Talk about tickling my Pacific Northwest heart. And on the inside, I'm going to have to make a second bag because I wanted, I was originally going to do it where I like flipped it over and it was a different print, but that felt really, I don't know. It, it just wound up going to feeling better this way. But look, it's like that painting. <laughs> oh my gosh so fun so fun oh and this was another stitchy kindness I will show what's in this bag because um or maybe I shared it last week if I did well here is the second one so I had a viewer reach out to me uh named Jack and they said would you like this I think I did share this I seem to remember saying these words before anyways I have it all kitted up and I'm so excited to start it and and it's in my Sasquatch bag so <laughs> so thank you again um, I'm very excited for that and that again will be part of my 12 by 12 parade so you'll get more details on like what fabric I chose I did wind up making a couple of floss switches because I was pulling from stash and you know all those all those fun details so that took up a large portion of my time because with that and then the few others I showed you I think I made around 10 project bags um, but I'm starting so many projects I really needed some more project bags so there is that it was it felt really good to get this done the next thing I worked on is buried underneath my stack of fabric. Let's see if I can get it out without making a big mess. I think I can. Okay, my binder. My binder of knowledge. Okay, so this, I'm working, I'm only working on one quilt right now. I mean, I have a lot going underway, but um, I'm focusing on just my Christmas quilt for the month of December, which is called Stars Above by Megan Collins. You can find, I found her through Instagram, but she has a website, megancollins.com. And she has some really, really cute designs. And this one has several different layouts. It looks completely different in different colors. And I was inspired to go Christmas with it by someone on Instagram. So I am doing that. And I have just been working on, oh, well, yeah. I've been working on these center stars. So it's pieced in quarters these rings and these center stars are foundation pieced foundation paper pieced which <laughs> is super easy it's not hard to do but it's time consuming and it took me over an hour and a half just to pull the papers out at the end <laughs> but I have a happy stack of oops oh of star confetti to throw around apparently. <laughs> um, but this will give you just kind of a little idea. My background of the stars is red and all of the stars are scrappy low volume Christmas prints. So they're all a little bit different. And, and oh, look at that one, isn't that so cute? Um, yeah, they're, I mean, they're all kind of the same, but not. <laughs> which is the point. It's great. Um, anyways, they're all ready to go. They are trimmed. They are paperless. And the next step is to sew the fans of the Dresdens and, um, and then those will get stitched onto these. And, and that's the quilt. I mean, really, 
It's like, once you get the stars done, it's fans, backgrounds, put the squares together. So it's not, I've done the hard part, I feel like. <laughs> so, I mean, I may take my words back when I wind up piecing the fans onto the stars. But I've done, I've done the mod rings, uh, modern double wedding ring pattern. I've done that twice. So this is like, pfft, I'm, I'm not worried about it. It's going to be good. I am enjoying it. So I will continue to, as far as quilting goes, I will continue to work on those. And my tips uh, for foundation piecing, if you've not done it before, decrease your stitch count to about two. And they usually say this in the pattern because it's standard practice, but backstitch at the start and end of each line. Well, there's a little piece of paper still stuck in there. I'll have to get that out. Um, but that will make it so that your perforation line is finer. And because of doing that, I do not pre-fold my uh, foundation paper. They will, you make the copies of the pattern and cut them out and then wind up sewing onto these. But a lot of the patterns will suggest that you pre-crease the fabric because it helps it tear easier. And it does, but I've found that if I stitch my, if my stitch length is shorter, I've got a string, then um, I don't have to do that. I haven't had problems with it tearing. It doesn't distort my stitches and, and it's worked well for me. So that's my, my two bits on that. Yes. Uh, I still want to cut out the backgrounds for my Zootropolis. I haven't done that yet. I almost did that before doing the video, but I realized that it wouldn't matter because it would just be a stack of squares to show you. So they're still here. I did switch out a few of my colors, um, but there they are. <laughs> um, so they're all chosen. They're finalized. They're in order. And so I just have to cut them out and then I'll be ready to just, um, you know, do a block at a time. So that'll be really fun. Um, it'll get more focus. I want to do some of the like prep, the cutout and stuff, you know, in between doing my stars above quilt and then, uh, then they'll just be prepped and ready to go to do stitching in the new year. So this will be fun. And do, am I doing anything else in the quilting world? No, everything's kind of been usurped by the holidays and that's pretty much where my brain has been floating around. Uh, I'm still waiting on an order from Fat Quarter Shop. It got delayed. You know, everybody's shipping everything right now. So it's it's a crazy... <laughs> I, I am thankful to the people who transport goods at this time of year because I just wouldn't want any part of that. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Anyways, I can wait. I'm in no hurry. So waiting on that and that will be fun to get because that is, has quarter yards for a project I showed. I think I showed it in my last video, but yeah. So mostly my Christmas project and cut out on Zootopia and I finished all my project bags. So yeah, moving along on my goals for my quilting and that's where I am. Oh, I wanted to show this. So this was kind of fun. I was digging through a box. We were looking for some paperwork <laughs> um, to register a car. And I came across this old, old picture of me. And I am, I think, 15 years old. Tops, 15, maybe 16. I mean, I can't imagine I'm 16. Also, why do kids look different now? <laughs> like, everybody, kids feel young to me. They definitely do. Like, kids are kids, right? But, um, and they get younger looking every year. But I see pictures of teenagers now, and they are dressing like, I don't even know what the comparison would be. Not like I dressed as a teenager, a young teenager. I, was a dork and <laughs> as I'm about to show you. Um, anyways, this was 
the first king size quilt I ever made. And I made it for my parents' bed. And, um, <laughs> well, here, I'll just show you. So that's me <laughs> at 15 ish. And I have a, a cow printed snap bracelet because I was a very elegant child. And this quilt was a labor of love. So it had some machine embroidered blocks my grandma helped me with. This is in my grandma's house. We stitched it in secret. And we got the, we were working from her stash uh, because I didn't have a stash at 15. And um, every block is different. It was a sampler. But every one that had like a phrase or specific images, they had connections to my parents. So my mom loves pansies. She was born in February. It's a February flower. Um, up here is some cherries. My dad's favorite fruit is cherry. Cherry pie. Cherries on ice cream. Um, he loves cherries. <laughs> and so they all had little meanings to them. And it was... It was a labor of love. It was huge. It's huge. I think they still have it. It's very, very tired at this point. It's over 20 years old. So, um, but it is one of my favorite gifts I've ever given. And uh, just, it was, it was very gratifying. It was very fun to do. I will say we got halfway through the sashing, not even, it was more than, it was probably three quarters of the way through the sashing. We'd cut it out and we must have miscalculated at some point somewhere because um, we didn't have enough sashing. I was putting the quilt together and we got three quarters of the way through it and I ran out of sashing and we could not find anything close to it at all. And so we had to pull out the entire top, all of the blocks, you know, from the sashing and the setting squares and um, the cornerstones and <laughs> start over. And it was devastating. I'm fairly certain I cried. And my grandma, the saint that she was, did the majority of the ripping out for me. And I was given the task of cutting the new fabric that we went out and bought with an extra half yard of. <laughs> and, um, and starting the reassembly. So this is after all of the reassembly. After that, you can see immense piano key porter in the end. And it was done and ready to go to the quilter. And I was a happy, happy young lady. <laughs> so I just thought it was kind of fun. I I look the same. No. <laughs> I just look at this and think, oh my goodness, you are such a baby. I was such a baby. I was such a little girl. But anyways, <laughs> I thought it was fun. thought I would share a little bit of my quilting past. So it feels like five lifetimes ago. <laughs> because it pretty much was. Uh, anyways. All right, that's all I've got for you. I will be back soon though. I don't know when I'll do the planning video. Um, it will either be in between this video and the next official floss tube or it will be right before the new year. So, so that's the plan. I hope you enjoy the Jingle Ball if you go. I hope I run into you and if you don't, I hope you have a fabulous weekend and that you get all the stitching time and that you don't stress out over the holidays and life because life's too short and we all do it, but <sighs> deep breath, right? <laughs> We're going to make it through. It's going to be good. I'm trying so hard to keep things lighter. I definitely have been in a space where I was intensifying my stress unnecessarily just because of my own brain demons. And, um, and so I'm trying really hard to be intentional <laughs> and find joy in little things each day. So I hope you find joy and I hope you stitch and I will see you very soon, my friends. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Um, you know, you know the dealio, like and subscribe and all that jazz, and um, I'll see you soon. Happy stitching. Okay, I'm back for just a quick second because I realized that in my 
incomplete notes. <laughs> I forgot to mention my shout outs. So I wanted to do that because I've watched some lovely people and um, and I've actually been shouted out. So it's it's been it's been a it's been lovely. And I wanna be I wanna show my gratitude. <laughs> um, also I just like kicked up a bunch of dust and it's floating around like magic fluffs. <laughs> um anyways, so um I already mentioned Lost Sin Stitches, but there's a new uh, floss tuber out there. I have followed her on Instagram for a while, and I was so thrilled when she decided to do a floss tube because she's just a lovely human. And uh, her name, her floss tube name is Wolfie Stitches. And she's just, She's a very calming person to listen to, and she's really sweet, and she did so, so well on her first episode. I can hardly wait to see uh, what she does, what she continues to do as her channel grows, and she continues to stitch. So uh, go check her out. She's lovely, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I hope you do. And um, then I wanted to say thank you to Pam and Steph at Just Keep Stitching because, oh my gosh, <laughs> they shouted me out and I totally had this like little geeky dance of joy moment because I don't know if they were aware of it when they did that, but they were the first Floss tubers I ever watched and I started watching them in, I think it was 2019. And when I first started hearing about Floss Tube, I like heard, I was go I lived in Portland at the time and um, so Acorns and Threads was my LNS and, <laughs> and, and you would hear like, oh, floss tube, blah, blah, oh, oh, floss tube, blah, blah. I was like, floss tube? What's a floss tube? I want one. <laughs> and so I, I went home and, and logged onto YouTube and I was like, okay, what's a floss tube? What's a floss tube? And Pam and Steph came up and. Um, and the rest is history. <laughs> so uh, it was super exciting to see that they had watched my episode and I, ooh, it just made me all giddy. So thank you for that. And uh, yeah, that was very exciting. So if you're here because of them, that's pretty cool, huh? <laughs> um, yeah, my mind is still reeling. I was telling my husband yesterday, we went out on a little date and I was like, oh my gosh, you won't believe what happened. And <laughs> he's like, okay, <laughs> that's pretty cool, babe. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, so, and then I am blanking because like I said, my notes are terrible today, but I will definitely link some people down below because I have been watching a lot of floss tube while I've been making my project bags. That's what I do. I actually watch floss tube while I quilt because <laughs> I can watch it on my computer in here and and then I watch documentaries and stuff and movies while I cross stitch. So <laughs> um, I'll, I'll link some of the other awesome ones I've watched below, but those are the two that immediately jumped into my brain because of, you know, obvious new and then exciting <laughs> so anyways go check them out uh thanks for you know my little four minute blurb here but i i really wanted to um I re <laughs> brain <laughs> i really wanted to mention that because i was grateful and she was awesome so happy stitching i'm gone for real now okay bye <laughs>